Hi guys, Monday morning and a quick video on the special adjustment brush in Lightroom. Now where this comes from is I'm preparing for master classes we're going to be presenting early in January and then throughout the whole of next year, which you can either join us at the office or you can look at these and view these videos after the fact online, but more details on that later. So during me preparing for these things and also chatting to people about how they process their wildlife images, some things have come up. People understand the basic workflow in Lightroom, not difficult. Start from the bottom, work your way down, start from the top and double check things again. But when it gets to the special adjustments, it's almost moderation that people miss. Because you have a bottle of vodka next to you, it doesn't mean you have to down the whole damn thing. Take it easy, bit by bit. So, special adjustments work the same. Start easy, don't just fly in and do everything hardcore and think it's gonna make it better. Less is sometimes more. So, for today, I just wanna to touch on some of the features you might not know in the special adjustment brush, and um, maybe you can use some of those. As I go out now all the way to the end of the year and preparing for January, we'll see more of these and then obviously at the master classes we're going to dive in in depth detail into all of this. So let's jump into Lightroom here. What I have on the screen is a picture of a lion, an image that I took a couple of years ago and I just did some very basic adjustments. So in my basic panel, that is all I've done to this image, just to kind of get a bit of punch, get a bit of saturation and stuff in there. That is global, so every adjustment I've made in this panel here is a global adjustment that applies to the entire frame. Now, this is where I now enter my special adjustment brush. Let's just look at some of the things, and this is the point for this exercise. We're not gonna make this line look pretty because he's got rather scarred up, so we're not gonna save him. But I wanna look at this special adjustment brush and how it works. So before we carry on, from the top to the bottom, we know that wherever we paint with this brush, those areas will be affected with the adjustments we make up here. Notice, when you open, you've got your basic panel, when you open the special adjustment brush, you've got a whole bunch of similar sliders, but they will only affect the areas that you paint. So, before we get stuck in, have a look at this. I'm gonna take my brush over onto here now, and I've got the bottom of my screen says show selected mask overlay. With that ticked, when I paint, it shows me where I'm painting, yes? So mine is green, you can change that by holding shift O, you can change the color of your overlay, which is pretty cool. I just prefer green, uh, reads a bit much. So shift and O in your paintbrush changes the color of your brush. So wherever I'm now, I'm not painting green, remember, those are just the areas where the adjustments I make will be applied. If I take my overlay away by clicking down at the bottom, I can now change the exposure, but it'll only change the exposure of those areas that I painted. Get it, got it, good, moving on. So, if I'm now going to delete that brush, the next step that we need to check here, and this is important, I'm going to just zoom into the top corner of this frame here so we've got something to play with. Notice, in my special adjustment brush, we've got flow and density. I'm going to elaborate on those more in future videos and in the master classes. With both of these at 100, if I just draw, single click with the mouse, click and drag, yes, and I turn my overlay on, of course, you can see it's a very solid brush that I've used. There's no opacity, you're painting big time. If I drop flow and density to around about 50 on both of these, and I do the same thing, click and drag and I draw one line, you can see it's a lot more subtle. Right, so far so good, we like subtle, we don't want to overdo this. You don't want someone to look at your image and say, ah, he used a special adjustment brush there. It needs to be subtle. But here's the bonus. If you have the flow and density set to 50, and you do one single stroke of the brush, it gives you a softer version of it. If you now take the same brush, I've changed nothing, and I draw up and down, I hold my mouse and I keep on going up and down over the same spot, you see it gets darker and darker and darker. I can therefore determine visually or using my overlay how much of the adjustments I am gonna to apply to certain areas. Copy that, okay. So, I'm gonna for now, I'm gonna keep my flow and my density on about 50. More on those in detail later on. For now, I'm gonna delete these brushes, they're all the same, done, and let us zoom out to the entire frame. So, for example, what I want to try and do, once I've finished my image, I've done my global adjustments and the entire thing looks like, well, looks right, looks like what I want it. I can now go and, for example, for this exercise, just to show you how this works, I'm gonna do selective sharpening and a bit of clarity to the lion's face. So, I'm going to go clarity up, let's, for argument's sake, say 25, Sharpness up to 25 as well. Here's a little one as well to up, 27, 25, close enough. 
Whenever you push clarity up, you need to check your shadows as well because clarity tends to drop some of them down. So to save those, I'm gonna just lift the shadows up a little bit um, and I think I'm happy for that. So again, what, wherever I paint onto this line now, those adjustments, shadows, clarity and sharpness will be applied. So I've still got my flow and density off, so I'm not gonna get that solid stroke. It's gonna be a lot more subtle. So I'm gonna turn on my overlay mask first so I can see the green area I'm painting just for you to see. So if I'm gonna paint on here now and I just do some rough strokes over this guy's face, let's say I want that area sharpened, yes? That is with my flow and density done. I can now, if I want certain areas more, I can go and paint more on one area and it will become darker in that area. Very, very handy. Okay, I'm gonna delete that and start again. This time, and I prefer to do this, I'm gonna turn my overlay off. So I'm not gonna see the green, but because I'm painting with already selected adjustments, yes, I will see the changes happen while I paint. I am gonna zoom into this line face just a little bit to give you the example. And I'm opening up my brush again. So again, there's my adjustments. I can now go and paint onto my line here. And you should be able to see the more I paint over certain areas, the sharper those areas get. Okay, let's just overdo this a bit. Remember now, if I just brush it once, it's a little bit of my adjustments. If I keep going, more and more and more of it happens. Yes? So, watch closely now. I'm going to turn my brush off. So the adjustment is applied. By hitting this little tab at the bottom next to reset and close of my special adjustment brush menu, I turn that off and you can see, look around the eyes on the sharp area, there is adjustments that have been applied. Very handy for you to isolate certain areas, either to make them lighter, darker, some dodging and burning, or to selectively sharpen your image. Let me zoom out here and go back into my brush. Let's say, for example, now I like the version, I like this kind of sharpening. Yes? You know you can create presets on the side where you can just select it and adjust the whole image. You can do the same with your special adjustment tools. Watch this. Up at the top here, next to effect, it says custom. Click on the two triangles next to it, opens up, scroll all the way down and say save current settings as a new preset. You give it a name. So I'm going to call this, uh, let's call it Selective Sharpen. If I can spell that correctly, Selective Sharpen. Okay, just because almost filled, check that. Create. Now I've got up here effect, Jerry Selective Sharpen, right? If I now reset my brush, reset, ah, I can't reset because it's on there. Let's go temp. I'm going to close this thing. If I now open my brush, I can go into the top in effect and I can select Jerry Selective Sharpen. There it is. And it'll automatically give me my exact same settings. Handy if you've got the same image or you like the amount of sharpening that you get from it. And you can paint them on using your density and flow to not have those harsh lines where people can spot it. But you can kind of fade it in. Very, very, very handy. There's a whole bunch of more of this coming, so make sure to watch the Wildlife Facebook page and the blog for more details on this. Otherwise, if you're in Johannesburg, check out the master classes. We start them in January, where we're gonna focus on things like this and way more in detail to help you guys to up the processing of your images. Wildlife images, it needs to look natural. It shouldn't look over sharp or over clarity or anything like that. This will help you to do that. If you have any questions, drop me a line on Twitter, drop me an email, Facebook, whatever the case is, and let's see what we can help. I look forward to seeing you guys at the masterclasses and we will chat online. My name is Jerry, this is Photo Chat for Wild Eye. I will see you next time.